So chapter 15 begins right here with this artwork, the Book of Kells. And the authors chose it because illuminated manuscripts are the major art form of this time. And of course they chose it because this is a stunning example of what the best illuminated manuscripts were. This is the best of the best. Look at how the intricate puzzle pieces fit together. It's like the mechanism of a fine, expensive watch. The ornamentation is so lavish with its tiny little worlds within worlds that it actually feels miraculous. And it is one of the clearest examples of the transfer of pagan metalworking art into manuscript painting with these little compartments like the cloisonne, the gold cloisonne, in which jewels are set in intricate patterns. So you want to read this passage carefully, keeping in mind that question I keep pressing you to use as your tool. What are the authors doing? Here, the authors are giving you an in understanding of the what the Book of Kells meant from a religious perspective. It's lavish and it contains four biblical accounts of Christ's life. So if you're unfamiliar with the Christian Bible, there are four basically separate stories of Christ's life in that book. And then they're saying it's precisely the sort of ceremonial book that you saw in the mosaic in San Vitali. In other words, it is to be displayed. It is meant to express the magnificence of God. It's not just meant to be used. Then they turn to style. And they remind you that the style of ornamental motifs is not a Christian style. The swirling spirals and interlaced tangles of stylized animal forms have their roots in jewelry created by the migrating so-called barbarian tribes. So note the descriptive language, swirling spirals, interlaced tangles. That's the beginning of being able to define a style. The, is to have language for the most noteworthy artistic choices. Here, the choice to have so many swirling curves, so many spiraling forms packed within one another. And then they go on to talk about how this was made in an Irish monastery and there were Viking attacks. So they're giving you the history of conflict at this time when Vikings were not yet Christianized, actually. They weren't Christianized until around the year 1000. So these Viking raids are the other to this Christian world. And they were a, th a constant threat, actually. So they're wanting you to have a background of the, the life at the time and what it was like to be a monk in the monastery making a work like this. So then you'll move to section 15.3 as an entire section devoted to the art made on the British Isles. And here they give you some historical context as background, because you always want to be thinking about the art in relation to history. And they're letting you know that the monasteries that were established were the beginning of Christianity in Ireland, but these the British Isles were relatively far from Rome and so the kind of Christianity that the Celtic peoples were practicing was different from what was authoritative according to the Romans and therefore in 597 the Pope in Rome Gregory the Great sent missionaries to essentially get those people on the British Isles doing the, what he would have called the right kind of Christianity, the Roman Christianity. So this is a little history of kind of the process of Roman Catholicism gradually establishing dominance across Europe. You'll then move on and you'll be thinking about the Lindisfarne Gospel book which is going to be a, a real focus of attention both in this passage of the text and also in the video that you're going to look at. So consider this one of your main highlights to know deeply.
along with the Book of Kells. And there's a little video from the book here. So you have an abundance of resource because you want to know this artwork in depth and detail. There are a lot of different aspects of it to think about, including this important page, which has been shown to be drawn from, modeled on this page. But if you look at the differences in style, this is much more naturalistic and Roman. And this page has been modified to have more of those qualities that are loved in the ornamental tradition of these regions, the, the jewelry tradition, so that the folds on the robe almost seem like the golden compartments in the jewelry and the bench is sort of jeweled and the frame itself is like a jeweled border. And you will want to read equally carefully the Book of Kells. These are two of the most significant artworks that you study in this chapter.